Well, isn't it fitting for the uh, the next time I return to this channel after discussing the assassination attempt on Robert Fico, Prime Minister of Slovakia, I am I'm back to discuss what for some people is a suspected assassination of the president of Iran. Now, uh, yesterday, um, I guess was it in the morning? I think. I, well, doesn't matter because morning our time, night time their time. Who cares? On Sunday, the president of Iran uh, was reportedly in a helicopter crash, and I believe this came first from Iranian media. You know, they were straight out with it and said, hey, the president's helicopter crashed. We don't know where it is exactly. It might be here, it might be there. Um, there was, you know, they had to have a, a broad search area. <laughs> they had a search and rescue team. There were people out hunting in the wilderness trying to spot the crashed helicopter. And apparently it was some pretty rough conditions because I heard that at one point two of the search and rescue team, two of the people, uh, themselves came up missing. So people were getting lost trying to find uh, the president of Iran. And I'm not too familiar with the climate of Iran, but I am, I, I am aware that it is in the northern hemisphere. And so I found it a little strange that in you know May they were talking about how the search was being hindered by freezing temperatures. Um, I don't know if they meant that literally, but I, I don't know. I, maybe they were somewhere really high up in the mountains to where it just stays cold all year long, but it's like, it's May. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I mean, that little ugh, learning about Iranian climate is, is not really relevant uh, to this story. What is relevant to this story is that they eventually did find the helicopter crash. And the president, as well, along with the foreign minister, are both dead. It's a pretty big deal in your country. All of a sudden, your president's just dead in a helicopter crash. That's never happened to a U.S. president, interestingly enough. Nobody's died in a helicopter crash. And helicopter crashes are um, they're pretty common. Helicopters are kind of scary because, you know, one thing goes wrong. It's not like with a plane where you can just sort of set it down. If, a helicopter, if something goes wrong with a helicopter, you're going down and... You're probably going to blow up. It's not good. It's not a good thing to be in a helicopter crash. And so naturally, for a lot of people online, uh, as soon as this was announced, um, they were quick to blame Israel because obviously there's a lot going on right now with Israel. Um, Israel is at war. Uh, as far as Israel is concerned, they're at war with Iran as well as the Palestinians. Israel has been known, um, even in times when tensions were were less than they are now, um, they've been known to conduct assassinations inside of Iran, to sabotage Iranian infrastructure. And so uh, I will concede that, at the very least, this is not exactly something that is outside of um, Israel's wheelhouse. This is certainly something that uh, this is the kind of thing that Israel would do. But with that said, uh, I have seen no evidence that Israel played any part in this. That doesn't mean that they didn't. Uh, it could be a coincidence that, you know, because it's not like, you know, like you could say, oh, well, the president of Iran just happened to be in a helicopter crash, you know, when they're, when tensions are really high with Israel. It's like, well, tensions are kind of always high with Israel. Um, I think that Israel... Uh, has uh, motive from their part uh, to assassinate the president of Iran, you know, no matter who it is at any given time. Israel has hated Iran since the mid-90s, I believe. Before that, you know, in the 80s, Israel got along pretty well with Iran. But, you know, when Israel pivoted to being pro-Arab, uh, they had to become anti-Persian. Uh, it's just sort of part of the strategy. You pick a side in that conflict, and Israel's decided, you know, hey, the Arabs are the ones who surround us, so why don't we make nice with the Arabs and try to make Iran the big bad guy, uh, go against them, and, you know, that'll give us something, um, that'll give us a common enemy with the Arabs, and the Arabs might, you know, might be more amenable towards us. And you can argue that that's been a good strategy uh, for Israel. You know, Israel has not been... Um, invaded by any Arab countries uh, in that time. Uh, but anyway, that aside, um, I just, 
we might get more information in the future, but as of now, I have no reason uh, to suspect that Israel's behind this. It could have very well just been a helicopter crash. Helicopters crash. It's it's unfortunate. It's kind of a um, you know a a reason to just not put your leaders on helicopters. You know, you kind of want them on planes. Planes are safer. Um, but you know the the biggest thing tell here is that I, I feel like if there was any suspicion that Israel was behind this, uh, Iran would have been saying that even before they found the president's body. I feel like Iranian media, you know, I mean, because they have state media in Iran, you would think that the state media would be putting out the message, hey, the president, his his helicopter appears to have crashed. You know, we suspect that Israel's behind this. I mean, even if it wasn't true, you would expect them to, you know, say something like that. Oh, we're going to look into this. I haven't heard any of that. Now, maybe, um, you know, maybe it's a reverse psychology thing, and Iran is so scared because, you know, they don't want a full-scale war with Israel because obviously that would be bad for everyone, um, you know, and they are trying to think cautiously about this. Maybe they don't want to announce if it actually was Israel that murdered their president um, because then they would have no way of avoiding retaliation. This was a theory, uh, one of the theories about the JFK assassination, you know, that the communists are the ones, you know, and it was orchestrated from Moscow or from Havana, you know, one of the two, that um, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, not only that he was the assassin, but he was not a lone wolf, he was working for the communists, you know, to take down the president of the United States, and that uh, our government covered it up in order to avoid uh, having to escalate into a full-scale war uh, with the Soviet Union. And, you know, if you're going on the theory that uh, the Iranians are rational actors and that they want to avoid a um, devastating conflict like that that would uh, destroy their country, um, I can see I can see how they might take this track. How they at least might for a time, try and conceal this truth um, and think about how they want to present it, how they want to break the news to the public that Israel just killed uh, our leader. And so that still might, they still might uh, come out and say that Israel did this. But as of right now, not even the Iranians are saying that Israel did this. Um, and also let me add that even if Iran were claiming that Israel assassinated their president, that also would make it 100% true, because Iran also could be lying. And so there are many different scenarios that are possible here uh, in which uh, the truth could end up breaking one way or the other. Uh, and in, in all of these scenarios, there's still a great level of uncertainty, because none of us were there, and none of us know exactly what happened. I mean, it could be that this helicopter was sabotaged uh, by some Mossad agent, and it was just so subtle and well done that even the Iranians um, aren't able to tell, you know, that they don't have evidence that Israel did this. It, it, that could also be the case. It could very well be the case. Israel, is, you know, this was a hit carried out by the Mossad, and Israel just covered their tracks well enough to where even Iran, when they know that they're looking for you know, evidence that Israel did this, they can't find it. But as of now, that's all speculation. Um, all we know is that the president of Iran and the foreign minister went on a, were on a helicopter. Um, they were also, I believe, this was a, uh, this was three helicopters of, a, you know, an Iranian diplomatic delegation. I believe they were visiting Azerbaijan, their next door neighbor. And these three helicopters were all carrying uh, carrying uh, Iranian government officials, and the one that was carrying the foreign minister and the president is the one that crashed. The other two, I believe, are okay. And so some people are citing that as saying, well, gee, what a coincidence. It, it was only the one carrying the president that crashed. You know, clearly, this was an inside job or a hit job or, you know, there was foul play. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't see the connection there because... It would make sense if this was an accident that only one out of the three helicopters would crash. If all three helicopters crashed, I would think, oh, well, there's definitely foul play. Someone sabotaged all three helicopters or somebody shot down all three helicopters. But if only one out of the three crashed, 
um, you know, no matter which one of the three it is, it's random. And so in the case that this were a pure accident, uh, we would expect, you know, odds are you're not going to have two out of three helicopters um, uh, end up crashing unless Iran is just really bad at maintaining helicopters, which I don't think they are. I don't think they would put their, uh, you know, their, their, their leaders in poorly maintained helicopters that are death traps. I would think that, you know, Iran probably works pretty hard to make sure that the president is not flying in a helicopter that is going to crash. So all in all, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm open to waiting uh, for more information uh, to see uh, if there was any sort of outside involvement, if this was a deliberate uh, assassination. But as of now, uh, I have no evidence that would support that. And so I'm going to default to saying this was an accident. That's where I'm at in my head. Um, you know, assuming it is an accident, let's say, and uh, the line of succession kicks in, a new president of Iran is sworn in, would I expect anything to really change? Uh, I don't think so. I would think that on Israel, most of the high-level politicians in Iran are probably on the same page. I don't think that this is like a, um, you know, I don't think this is like a, a Nixon-Ford case where... There's an incentive for somebody to, uh, you know, like let's say Israel to take out uh, the guy on top so that uh, the second in command can take over because the second guy's, you know, a, a shill or something like that. I doubt that there's anyone in the Iranian government, you know, at the high levels like this, who is a shill for Israel, that Israel would assassinate someone in order to try and empower. And so I don't think there's a huge incentive for Israel to assassinate any one politician. Um, it, it seems to me that Israel has disliked all the presidents of Iran in my lifetime pretty much equally. They don't seem to like uh, one more than any of the others. So why take out the president? Why not take out the Ayatollah? You know, isn't he a lot harder to replace? I mean, there's only been two Ayatollahs since uh, the current government in Iran came into effect. I believe. I believe there was Khomeini, and then now there's Khamenei. So it might, you know, you would think if you're is if you're from Israel's perspective, it'd probably be a lot more destabilizing to the country if that's your goal uh, to take out that guy. You know, he's he's above the president. Anyway, uh, that's all I have to say on the matter. There's too much we don't know. Um, so with that said, I will see you folks back here in the next one.